and welcome to part two of my garden tour. Uh, we've discussed several of my favorites and we'll go with my this next turn. We'll go with my, um, some of my other favorites, starting with this plant, uh, which is the Comifera monstruos, monstrosua. It's related to the uh, myrrh that's um, you know, part of the whole biblical thing. Valuable spice in the um, Middle East. Really cool plant, has a gnarled trunk to it. The sap, uh, as well as in related species, is uh, quite an quite a, a, a aromatic, uh, aromatic, goodness. Um, and it smells really nice when I go to trim them, so I always love this plant. I love the form of this one. It's my absolute favorite. Let's see, I'm gonna a cohesive shot. But I've been trimming this thing for well over a decade, and it's a nice plant. I love it. This is one of my favorites. I just love making these things, and they're they really hold to a really nice like bonsai design, bonsai style design, really. I grow, t I grow them very easily from root cuttings, so I have a ton. But this is my favorite. It's uh, Apicula caria de cariae, uh, Madagascarium plant, also known as Jabili. I have a couple little um, Porsche Lucarias at the bottom there, little cuttings. Trim them up and get them more bushy and covering. It's the same plant. Gets a really thick, warty trunk to it. And early on, I, I probably twined that around a, uh, a stake, so that's why it looks all curled like that. But it, it makes for really nice designs. As you can see, I have quite a few of them. I'll show you. Most of them are in this area, so I'm doing different things with each one. It's, it's one of the more more creative type of plants I have. You can do lots of stuff with them. Try them with different shapes and it's like they take to really they take to design really nice like basically. And there's a little bit of a closer look at this one. It's probably the second favorite one. Design wise. Really nice little root system going on there at the bottom. This is a ficus glumosa. It's a rock fig. Really cool little plant. It's uh, related to the banyan trees uh, out in Asia. There's tons of roots everywhere. Ficus is her pretty good about producing all sorts of crazy aerial roots. So you can kind of see a has a bit, like twisted root structure there. It's pretty awesome. The roots are my favorite part of the plant, really. Well, kind of a lot of plants, really. There's some exceptions. And that's a cool plant. Sticky white sap. It actually should get some figs on it eventually if I, you know, if it gets large enough to produce. But they, from what I gather, they're not edible. Yeah, and see, so you know that thing? This is a ficus lee. It's a common banana leaf fig we have here for sale quite often, but I have kept it um, contained in a bonsai pot. And the roots are kind of crazy, which is always fun. See tons of air roots there. And here's a trio of myodinias. They're in the passion flower family, distant relatives of them. The one in front is an uh, Adenia <clears throat> spinosa. The form is not that great, frankly. It tends to have a lot of dieback when I trim it back, so I've been trying to get it more bushy, but I don't know. I really like the base of it, though. Just crazy, nice and nice and you know, just a plant. My hand for scale. <laughs> 
And there's now Adenia aculatea. It seems to root fairly easily. I have a little cutting of it here. Comes out with a long vine like a lot of Adenias do. Well, little twirling um, tendrils to anchor it to things. This one is a really cool one. It's Adenia perrier. A snowflake like leaves. It tends to kind of go crazy, so I keep it trimmed back fairly regularly. It has a fairly thick properly this angle. It has a really thick base too, but not as thick as like this bad boy. <laughs> This big plant here is, um, and the ones on the sides are known as Uncarinas. This one's like Uncarina grandidieri. Really thick, big, thick trunk to it. I've trimmed it back a few times. This is where these other plants are from. They're cuttings from the top of that. They have a nice little felty leaf here. It's nice and soft. I quite often have to take the all the leaves off before I take them in, otherwise they tend to you know, get um, white fly pretty bad. It's not scale too, which is always annoying, but they don't seem to stress out about the leaves during the winter, so I don't either. <laughs> this is a, um, another species of it, um, in Carina rosiana. It has a nice little yellow flower, as does the bigger one, but later on in its life. It hasn't quite opened up yet, at least that one hasn't. But it tends to flower pretty prolifically for the most part. I wouldn't feed these again for too long. This is what's known as a golem chrysula. It's a um, type of jade plant, basically. It has little suction cup little in the leaves. Really cool plant. I've never been able to grow it before this year. I think my soil stayed too wet, so. So far this year, they've, they've been doing quite nicely, though. This is a plant I found fairly recently. It's a species of double's backbone. Um, Petalanthus tithymeloides nana. Pretty cool little plant. It's also known as a redbird flower. It's supposed to have little redbird-like blooms, but I've never seen them actually bloom in the wild. Uh, I think the larger plants I have, but little baby species is kind of new to me, so I've only had it this year. Really cool, though. And uh, this one's kind of a new one to me as well. This one's a Kalanchoe tomentosa, a variety called cinnamon. Let's see, some of the newer leaves are really nice and red. When I first bought the plant, it was in a lot more sun, so the entire plant was about, it was pretty black, which is really cool. It's like, I'm always a fan of odd coloration for plants. I mean, naturally black, not like rotting black. But in this particular light situation, it's, Nice slice cinnamon um, colored in the new leaves, which is cool. It's also known as a panda plant. Now, on either side are porch lucarias. You can saw those bottom of one of the, the pots of apicolucarias. Well, great little plant. Elephant bush is a common name. They tend to um, go pretty rapidly. Um, the one on the right is variegated. The one on the left is normal. I also have a... Um, I also have a prostrate, prostrate, yeah, a low-growing variety. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm gonna think we'll leave off with this cactus. It's a pretty cool one. I've had it for quite some time. I'm not exactly sure its species. Probably an Echinopsis, of some variety, but it's a crustate form. Basically, it grows like a crest. It's a mutant form, but it's. I mean, all plants are mutants. Basically, all animals are mutants too. So. Cool little plant. Um, I, it's really weird to, it's really difficult to be pot. I probably mentioned it before, but it's uh, it's a neat plant. <laughs> I want a couple more since we have time. Uh, Sirius Peruvianus monstrosus. It's a variety known as Fairy Castle. Wait, no. I'm sorry, this one's not Fairy Castle, but it's a. Anyway, it's another mutant form, basically. I actually took a bunch of cuttings off it. It's kind of like cauliflower, and then slugs kind of got to it, so it's a little crispy tips to it. But it's a new plant. It seems to grow nicely, other than slugs, which I took care of. So.
shouldn't bother anymore. This one is an odd one. Sophia cactus, spineless variety. I bought it ages ago and it's been growing nicely since. It has a bit of scarring on the other side, which I can't really get around to right now, but I bought it from a garden rich ages ago and it's just come by itself and I, I've never seen anything else quite like it. It's just different. No spines whatsoever. Anyway, I'll um I'll take care and um and hope you enjoy the video.